Hey, welcome. It's Monday, November 29th, and I am still John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, brought to you by Penny Boys. PB Alerts is what everybody thinks of, but you need to check out Penny Boys University. Seriously, folks, it's an education that can change your life. So I normally look at OTC and penny stocks that are going to move, are moving, that have potential, something. And today I got you a few. I didn't know we were going to be looking at these and all three are in the same sector. And I got to tell you, it's a sector I just try to stay away from. I honestly do. But here I am nonetheless. So let me show what I got for us today. Taking a look at the first stock, we're doing it on otcmarkets.com. That's just where I start my initial research on any OTC stock. otcmarkets.com is the only site where FINRA and the SEC deposit all of that important information. The filings, the financials, the stock count, it's all right here. Why Google search it when, well, I just told you, it's right here. All right. The first stock we're taking a look at, we did look at last Friday. It was one of the five stocks we checked out. This is TOMDF, Totos Medical Limited. They finished the day just over seven and a half cents. They fell. Now I know when I looked at this, it was running today because a lot of uh, biotech and biopharma companies involved with this COVID new strain Omicron uh, were running today from uh, Moderna all the way down. So we'll see what the chart says at this point in time. However, this company, the reason I'm primarily looking at it again today is it had news today. You know, when I was looking over the news, there's a catalyst date of December 15th. There are multiple things supposed to happen December 15th of this year that could have this stock running. And it looks to have a lot more value than we originally thought it had. So this is on the QB, that is the middle tier of the OTC market, the better tier, that's what they call themselves, the better market. All of their financials have to be audited. You come from the pink up to here, you gotta start telling us all your business so they're more transparent. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent, so they look good. So what is their basic description here? Totos Medical is a vitro diagnostic company focused on the distribution of a comprehensive suite of solutions for screening and diagnosis of COVID-19 and the development of blood tests for early detection of cancer and Alzheimer's disease. So you can imagine they've got a lot of different drugs that they're working on right now. All right, let's see what sort of excitement was wrapped around this company today. We'll look at their shares to see how many more or less they sold. Normally they do just over 7 million, today they did just over 38 million. So you've got five times normal volume. I know there was a surge today, looks like there was a pullback, but there was some excitement. What is her share count? Well, she's got about 607 million shares, or over a half a billion shares, which is quite a lot. And that comes down to the fact that uh, she has had a lot of investors that were holding shares for a long time come up to their lockup periods and they were released and they were allowed to sell them for a profit and they did. And I'll show you in the news, they went from 92 million to 300 million to 900 million, all in the outstanding share count. And right now our float is at 607 million, which is a lot of shares. But looking at the news and their new evaluation, doesn't seem that this should really be a problem. Uh, what sort of financials do they show over here? Uh, lots. So they were making nothing, and this year they were making, we got three zeros here to put down there, so they were making over $5 million at the end of last year from nothing. So whatever they're doing, and I think it is because they are selling these two new drugs, uh, Holly something or other, we're going to get to see some information and pictures of them, but they just started selling these and they have a lot to do with, uh, oh, well, let's just read because I can't remember. Got to tell you, when it comes to doing biopharmas and biotechs, they're difficult for me because it gets pretty technical to explain, rather dry. So if I get general, understand why. So what about their disclosures? We got any of those coming out? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We had one come out today, and I'm sure this has to do with the news of their new acquisition. Uh, let me see. On November 18th, 
uh, the company entered into a license agreement with T-Cell Protect Helis. Yes, this is the company that is buying 500,000 of their new pills that they've got out, their Tolavid Daily and their Tolavid. Uh, these are two products that they have now got on the market and T-Cell Products is moving them for them over in Europe. They've got, they got 11,000 stores in Greece that they are initially launching them on, 50,000 bottles. So it is taking off this new drug that they have on the market and they expect it to get a lot more attention with the Omicron variant of COVID. Don't understand all of that, but they say it's really gonna help them. Uh, then it says uh, on November 22nd, the company entered into a purchase agreement. Okay, that's about getting some money to help them out. Then November 24th, they entered into a binding letter with NLC Pharma, which is the deal they closed today. So let's back up to that, get out of here. Matter of fact, instead of going to the dry news, this covers a lot more than just today's news. It's an article that has pretty much taken all of the current information that's going on right now and what is coming up, which I thought was really good to see. So let's just start here where I've got it highlighted. Totals Medical just announced the acquisition of NLC Pharma in a cash stock transaction. That's the news that came out today. NLC Pharma is gonna move its phase two assets into Totals Medical subsidiary 3CL Science, phase two. They've got drugs in the pipeline trying to be approved right now. Uh, 3CL Sciences is a majority owned subsidiary at a 60-40 split. Totals has 60%, NLH, NLC has the other 40%. And NLC is also getting a single digit, meaning less than 10% royalties on these goods. Uh, in other words, they're trying to really point this out, and I want you to see this, that TOMDF literally just picked up hundreds of millions of dollars in assets for just over $3.2 million between cash and stock, and they got 18 months to pay for it. Yeah, that's right, hundreds of millions of dollars. It says here that the new company, 3CLC Sciences, is expected to raise 10 million. Totos is gonna help NLC raise 10 million on top of the 2.25 million that they got. Um, within six months of closing, they're gonna try to get that 10 million. TOMDF is also committed to facilitating a go public transaction, whether it be an IPO, a reverse merger, or even a SPAC. They want to spin 3CL Sciences out on its own. And the primary reason that they want to do that is because the deal that they've made here with uh, NLC is that right? I'm not sure I keep getting that right. NLC is that they're 40%. They want to sell at an, a true evaluation of the company. And we don't know what 3CL Sciences is worth because it's a subsidiary underneath this company. And you can't get a true valuation. The only way to do that is to spin it out on itself. Now, they could put out a disclosure but it would be a public disclosure. If they were to tell the value and some other information in this disclosure, the competitors could see it too. And the company is actually worried, and they say that right here, that they're worried about um, being that information being used to lever low ball offers, which is why they just don't have it. And it says, once the definitive agreement is disclosed after December 15th, shareholders might get a better read on what professional appraisal report values the assets at. Um, now, I was telling you that they did have 92 million shares back in 2019. By 2020, they had 376 million. And then they just had some more big investors well, they had shares, they had locked up, they could not sell them till a certain date, and that date hit, and boom, they flooded the market with them, and there are now 914 million, so it's really grown a lot. But they like to tell us here that uh, it has stopped, the growth has stopped, they're not gonna be adding any more. Um, they have signed a lockup agreement with the new investors, so we don't have to worry about any more shares coming on the market for a while, effective until until December 15th, 
which is just the one coming up. There's some more information here. The price will no longer have an artificial ceiling. Investors are now able to look at a valuation with a different lens because TOMDF now owns 60% of the assets that are worth well over $250 million. And investors don't have to be afraid of how many shares outstanding there will be after the notes are converted. Then he goes on to show you competition here. You got companies like Atia Pharmaceuticals at $675 million. Um, Roche Holdings at... Uh, Oh, they don't tell us here. 78, 785 million. The cheapest one is at 235 million. And this company, I think, is like at 90 million, something like that. Well, let's go take a look here. What is the market cap of this company? 73. 73 million. And this guy believes that with what this company has, with the value already sitting on the table, he's done the math and he says, you know, you're looking at three times, and I just showed you, we're at 74 and the cheapest one here is 235. So we could go three times up in price right now and we would just be meeting our cheapest competitors. And he believes with all the new value built around this, that's very likely says there's a lot of moving parts in TOMDF right now, but there seems to be one singular con constant of December 15th. The lockup ends on this date. The deal is set to close on this date. This is the deal. And it says it's possible the interim results could be released around this date. So there's a lot of things that are wrapped around December 15th, which could make this stock really jump. It's already jumping in anticipation. It says this clean and strong balance sheet could lead to an expedited NASDAQ uplisting. Another catalyst, another tease, right? Investors like to buy into major binary catalysts, but this interim readout catalyst could have an impact on world markets. If ever there was a catalyst to buy, this one has excellent odds. Um, he goes on to tell you that it is a problem when you're talking about biotechs investing in them because it can take a lot of time. You got to wait for all the phase trials. They're selling um, shares over and over and over again to raise money to keep the bills paid because they got nothing to sell. They're looking for something to sell. So they really are leeches and suck a lot of money out of you unless they have something to sell. And that is what they're saying here is that Totals Medical is different. They're already bringing in revenues. We just seen over five million dollars just in the last year and if i scroll right down here you can get a picture of these these are the two drugs that they have made the deal with uh over in europe to be sold and uh, one is going for 99 dollars a bottle the other one goes for 239 dollars a bottle they tell us down here that uh, totals has linked a collaboration with t-cell protect to supply this nutraceutical. This included an 18-month agreement for a half a million bottles expected to meet the demand for 11,000 stores, a uh, 50,000 bottle initial purchase order. This is all in Greece. That was the first country that they're launching this in. Uh, let me see what else we got here. Totals could have the hottest product on the market in the coming weeks after Pfizer succeeds in getting approval for its 3CL protease inhibitor Paxlovid. Paxlovid's approval would also set a precedent or regulatory pathway for the approval of Toliver. Consumers are easily connecting the dots between the drug Toliver and the brand Tolivid. Investors should keep in mind that any positive Pfeiffer announcement reflects even better on TOMDF since it essentially the only pure play on 3CL protease inhibitors. Good information. What else we got down here that I noticed? Uh, it says that the dilution is exhausted currently. Uh, it could start back up, but it says that we're pretty good on that. The clinical trial results are on the cusp of phase three. Uh, in the most conservative sense, that means they haven't even finished phase two yet. <laughs> but might have good enough data to file for an EUA. I think that's emergency use approval or something like that. Uh, the overhang is gone and the story is, is resonating with retail investors who recognize that the drug could be superior to Pfizer's Paxlovid. Very interesting. The valuation gap is going to close quickly with the scheduled conference call on December 2nd. 
Ooh, December 2nd. So we got that as another catalyst. The CEO or somebody from the company is going to get online and start talking before December 15th, right? And that's what they say here. The December 15th catalyst. God, I can't help but think of popcorn. Pop, 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 boom, just all over the place. They have just got so many catalysts going right now. All right, let's go see what the chart looks like because I'm telling you, this thing was running when I looked at it first thing today. And when I brought it to your attention, it was 3% down. What's up with that? All right, does the chart look familiar? Right, we looked at it Friday. We looked at it on TOS, Think or Swim. I get it for free, folks, at TD Ameritrade. Just sign up with them. It doesn't cost you anything. They don't even ask for a deposit. You don't have to trade with them. You'll get the link, and you can use this program for free. Voila. So we are looking at TOMDF again. This is a six month, four hour chart. This huge jump right here was when they had a pass of their, uh, a certain drug got the right uh, markings, but they talked about it on Fox TV. So between the news coming out that the drug had passed and being on Fox, it took off did really good don't know why it fell though can't tell you jump back up doesn't really matter and you can see we looked at it Friday because it has been growing in this season and from Friday it just took off again so here we are Monday and it is running so what does that look like uh, this is today we looked at it here on Friday Thursday right all right let's come in on that five day Okay, so we looked at it after a very strong day. It had a strong day. It took a very big bounce, quick and early. Let's see what that breaks down to on the minute. So you did have some time to get in on that. One minute, two minute, three minute, four minute. So the first minute, it was already, it did drop. It opened up here at about eight cents and it fell down to, we're gonna drop to zero, 79. That's 7.9 cents. 79 and it went all the way up to 87 87 see so if you just saw it right here before the day opened up at 0 0.081 we're calling 81 you saw it at 81 and you said well i'm going to put in my bid at 85 that's that's probably far enough no it wasn't it went all the way to 87 you might have caught it but you got to remember that's one minute folks you got to read the charts get your buttons put in the price because all otc stocks have to be bought on a limit order purchase you've got to type in your price and send that order in and i doubt you were going to get that while it was rising in the first minute so I normally watch the first minute and get ready. The second minute I can do something. We've seen it was rising the second minute. Well, again, it is a difficult play. Nobody is saying it's easy, but you've got to get ahead of the price. Wherever the price is, you got to throw five out in front of it or something and hope it catches you. Now remember, just because you bid 15 doesn't mean it's going to sell it to you for 15. It may be at nine cents right here and it's cruising up and it hits 10 cents. Well, you didn't know where it was going, so you bid 15. Well, it sold it to you for 10, right? You got it at the best price you could get it at under the circumstances. So that's how you would get in here. And I normally say on a quick morning bounce, you want out at 10, 10.05 in the morning. When did this hit its high? That hit its high at, uh, where is the time there? Oh boy, that was pretty bloody quick. That was only 10 minutes, eight minutes into the day. Eight minutes into the day, and from there we were fluctuating. However, she is well over her 50% mark. Oh, I haven't got my... She kept, more, well, about 50%, but she didn't fall past it, that is for sure. Right in there, you see? So it rose, fell, there's its 50% from the bottom to the top. We cut it in half. A strong stock will stay near that 50% line. Obviously, the more above it, the stronger. More under it, the less strong. But it's hanging on like a monkey doesn't want to let go and it's sitting on top so this is what you expect out of a strong stock this shows signs of growth tomorrow absolutely does and with all the catalysts it's got 
Folks, you have speculation, you have anticipation, you have catalysts upon catalysts upon catalysts. We have the surprise catalyst when we find out what they say the company's worth. And ultimately, if you decided to hold it, you've got an uplisting, which is a long ways down the road. My point is from little to big, this company's got a lot of popcorn to pop. So I really think this is an interesting play. I don't think you're gonna get it much lower in my personal opinion, I don't think it, I mean, it may dip. What do I know? But with all the excitement, with all the catalysts, with all it's hanging on to this 50% line, I don't think it's going to fall. So if I don't think it's going to fall, this is probably the best price you're going to get. You may get it at eight, nine instead of nine. But the point is, I think it's going to grow. You'll probably get a very strong bounce in the morning. You may have to chase it. You may want to see if it comes down. But with only two weeks and a call on December 2nd. I just think there's not going to be a lot of big bounces down. But what do I know? Watch the charts. I think this thing could be a very nice ride. So between now and December 15, catch the dips and ride the highs. This could be a roller coaster of a ride or it could just be a mountain ascent. In either case, I brought it to your attention. Keep your eye on it. So would you believe we're looking at another biopharma, biotech, and I really don't like these companies, but it's not a coincidence. I actually chose this company because there's a tie to Totos. When I was reading about Totos, I discovered that this company had about a 10% investment in Totos. They've got 78 million plus shares of the company right now. They had a deal back in 2019 where they were helping Totos with an Alzheimer's blood diagnostic limpro test. And I don't know how they came about it, but now they got just about 10% of the company in their portfolio. Now this company doesn't work with COVID. They do work with a lot of other stuff, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, uh, cancer. They make fake skin for burn victims. They have a vape product where you vape cannabinoids to help certain situations with the body. And they're not the only ones doing that. We're going to take a look at TBPMF, who is, well, I think probably head and shoulders above this company in that arena. We'll see. And there's other things. They got a uh, hemp emporium. They have two stores in Texas and they sell CBD products online. So they got a lot going on right now. But there's no other connections with Totos that I could see except that they own 10% of the company roughly, and both stocks were running the same today. When one went up, when one went down, the other did too. And that's really what drew my attention in on this. So what sort of excitement was there? Well, pretty much the same as there was around Totos, about five times as much from about 6 million to roughly 30 million, roughly. Share count, over here we have about half as many as we had on Totos. This is about 3 million shares. It says 137. Go with the 300 million. That's probably closer to it. Financials. Well, what the is that? So you're telling me in 2019 they made 20 million? I'll bet you they sold something. Something must have been sold and they got revenues because there's no way they sold a nice even number at 20 million and then dropped down to 74,000. So some purchase was made, some acquisition, something sold, something. I don't know what, because they did not just happen to evenly end up on all zeros there. So, financials, they don't have a whole lot of money coming in, do they? And disclosures, let's see their disclosures. They got nothing current, not for over a month, and of course their financials are up to date. So they are pink current, they have a verified profile transfer agent, and they got independent directors. Now they could uplist to the QB. They are at the break point, one penny. You need to be at one cent to uplist to the QB, but you have to audit your financials when you get there. And that costs money. Hiring a CPA and having your financials all audited is not cheap. So there's an expense that comes with that. When you're not making any money, chances are you're not gonna uplist. Now, taking notice that the price is a penny. This is a beautiful purchase price. Now, consider this. It's common sense that when it hits two cents, your penny is doubled. That means your investment has doubled. But now, if you bought this at five cents and it moved that exact same penny to six cents, you would only make 20% gains. But buying it at a penny, that same exact penny move gives you 100% gains. There's no difference in the movement. What was different is when you bought the stock. 
always try to buy as close to a penny or double zero one. When you're buying these penny and penny stocks, you will get the greatest gains in the shortest amount of time that way. Trust me. So they had 64% gains today. Pretty good. Now that's a little interesting. Didn't we say that totals had 3% loss? And that's what confused me. That didn't look like a loss today. The day looked like a total gain all the way. I'm a little confused here. Okay. In midst of all that confusion, let's go take a look at this chart and see how it finished. I expect it pretty much did just launch up and went sideways. I haven't looked at it since about lunchtime. This is AMBS on the six month, four hour. And you know, looking at this, you see these big bars, you'd think she had a small float, but she doesn't, right? It's like 300 million. Now maybe it was smaller back then, but this jump here is 30%. The same exact size jump over here, because it's down further, is worth 50%. Mm hmm. And further up you go, the less that jump is worth. So she came down across the 200, right here, that red one, 200 SMA, and showed no power as she went underneath it for about three and a half, four months until she hit this low. Really had to drop hard and hit that low bubble, and thank goodness she did because that propelled her up across that 200 again. She did mosey back down, but here recently she's gained a lot of power and you can see just here today, it has ripped. It has taken off. Let's go take a look at that five day, five minute. So there's your growth pattern. She had a jump here, which got her going. That was back in the original low and that got her going and she took off today. Now, we didn't look at the news. I don't know why we didn't do that, but I, I recall we didn't. We didn't look at the news for this company. There is no current news. The most current is October of 2020, I believe it is. So we got nothing for over a year. And here we have the stock taking off in the morning, going sideways and still taking off. Why would she do that? The only thing I can come up with is her total investment and that investors are aware of it. If investors didn't know, the price wouldn't automatically go up, right? Not until you saw their value on their next quarterly report. Then you'd say, whoa, how come they're worth so much more? Oh, right, they had an investment, but we're aware of it. So we are pushing the price up as totals goes up. So I expect every time totals goes up, this may get a nice bounce, just out of sympathy, if you will, actually investment. So here was her high of the day. Her high was up here at 0 0.0118. Right now she's at 0 0.0115. It did not touch it, so I don't expect a pullback, right? If we hit the high, I would expect a pullback. So right now the tendency is to surge forward, to push forward and get to that high. So I expect there to be shares waiting to be bought tomorrow morning. There were shares that got put into the queue that ding, 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 the bell went off and stopped it. And some people were upset because they wanted their shares and they put them in at a higher price because it was rising, rising hard and fast. So I expect this to take off tomorrow morning. Now we don't see any pre-market aftermarket activity, none here. So the price is probably going to be what it is right now, 0 0.0115. Now that last bounce went from, uh, 0 0.0099 up to 0 0.011. So it moved two. It moved two notches. So I would do at least double that. Double that. I would take this to, oh man, 0 0.0113, 0 0.0114. Yeah, I'd go 0 0.01145, which is really going to bring you all the way up here, right? That's going to bring you clear up here as your bid. But you don't know how high this is going to jump as soon as that first minute goes. And you are looking for the first minute before you get your bid in. But put that bid in, in that first minute. Have it set up 0 0.01145. Be ready. And if it only makes it to here, that's the price you'll get. It's not going to sell it to you for that. It'll sell it to you at the best price. If it only makes it to here, that's the price you'll get. But you won't miss it if you bid up there. Now there is a ceiling. You can't go bidding $20 and say, oh, I'll, I know how to beat that. I'll just bid $20. It won't take your bid. You get too far away from the price, it just ignores your bid. At least most platforms I've seen. Maybe yours works. Maybe it does. So this looks really good for tomorrow. 
This looks really good. I expect this to continue running. Look at that volume. Super strong. Strongest of the day. Strongest of the week. The MACD is on a huge turnaround surge up. Big tsunami. And look at all that fire, folks. This thing is blazing at 82 on the RSI. Blazing. So I expect this to run tomorrow morning. You can get in probably at 0 .0114 maybe even cheaper if it doesn't rise that high. Remember, if it goes up over 20%, take your gains and get out, unless you're gonna ride this out, unless your intentions are to stay in. But even if, even if, it's probably gonna dip like it did here. It's gonna go up and then it's gonna dip and you can see how fast it fell. There, there was no thinking. You saw the first red and bloop, it was gone. So I like to take my gains as soon as I see them. If it falls, then I can buy in cheaper and ride it the rest of the way and get more gains. But why throw away those big gains in the early morning surges, right? All right. Now we're going to go look at the last biotech. That's right. One more biotech. Not my favorites, but I got to tell you what. This next one, it is my favorite biotech. So what is my favorite biotech? It's TBPMF. TBPMF is Tetro Biopharma. They finished the day at 18 cents, 23% up. They are on the QB. They are all financially audited, verified profile, transfer agent. They're all in good shape. So why is this my favorite biotech? Well, for a couple of reasons. First off, I'm a cannabis investor from way back. I've been investing in this since 2018, waiting for the boom. And I think the boom has passed us, but that's another story. Yeah, we got another surge coming, but the big boom, I think that's gone. Anyways, that's all this company works with. They're a biotech, biopharma that only works with ingredients from the cannabis plant, THC, CBD, tinctures. They, they, they use these sort of things and they've come up with precise dosages of CBD, THC, and a particular tincture, which you normally use for aroma and flavor. They're using them as directive arrows that can target the CBD and THC to where it's needed in the body. And you vape this product. And what is it for? Pain relief. In two to three minutes, your pain is evaporated. And they're testing this on the most excruciating pain known to people. And it is stage four cancer pain right now. People who normally take morphine for their pain, they are testing it against that. It is called the Reborn One trial. It started a few months ago. It was only supposed to be 10 weeks. They ran into some headaches trying to get patients to test with because the criteria was so tough. And everything went into a stall and the price fell from 30 cents to 16 cents and it bumped today to 18 cents because they had news and finally it was good news it isn't finished but it was good news and before i jump into that i also want to mention that they have other drugs made with thc and cbd that help sars sars is a side effect of covid and it is killing 10 million people with or without covid anyways so we need something for sars they also have a drug for eye ulcers for animals and people they also have another drug for a certain organ of the body so they've got a lot and they're all made with cbd thc and tinctures so it's it's a very unique company the other reason i really like this company I'm invested highly into them. Yeah, once I heard what was going on, I jumped into this company at 30 cents and it's fallen, but I still have a lot of faith. Yes, I have averaged down, I have bought more. And my anticipation is because this company, uh, I do believe when they wipe out the opiate crisis and they knock all these huge giant companies into the dirt and it's going to be tough. It's going to be a battle to knock out all these opiate companies and all the drugs that they manufacture. It's not an easy battle and he's having to protect himself folks because he has a product here that can really, really uh, disrupt the me medical industry around the world. He doesn't just plan on tapping in to a $60 billion industry. He is going to take $60 billion of it with their drugs. And one more thing, just to show you how bizarre this is, because the company has been invested into THC and CBD and cannabinoid research for 16 years, this country gives patents based on science. And Tetra Biopharma received a patent for any inhaled 
<laughs> inhaled any inhaled CBD or THC product or device that's right if you smoke CBD or THC out of a joint a pipe a vapor stick whatever every single company in America will have to pay this company a royalty that sounds bizarre but the fact is patents are given based on science and this company has studied every single cannabinoid as it comes into your body and what it does they've even checked combining cannabinoids this one with that one that one with this one this one with that one they have proven they are the experts in this market so let's see what sort of excitement was wrapped around this today they normally do about a quarter million shares. They did three times that many today. And let me tell you, a quarter million shares, ah, we watch TBMF every day. That is not a lot of movement, folks. It's very little movement. And when it does move, it's been going the wrong way. Uh, security details, share structure that is. We have 354 million. Uh, they've had to sell some sh uh, more shares here recently. They needed some money just at the end, uh, but they are uh, now moving forward with securing a cannabis supply globally, which tells me that they know something about the FDA trial probably. You don't go securing global uh, rights to, uh, your, to make your product unless you know your product is going to be passed. So that's just a feeling I have. And anything else we got? Well, not really. Let's just get to that news. Okay, don't rush me. So today we came out with news 1129 Quicksleaf. There, that is the botanical version. They also have one called Calms, C-A-U-M-Z, I believe it's spelled, which is the synthetic version. Believe it or not, you can't tell the difference between synthetic and botanical. It's just that doctors trust synthetic more than botanical because they know it's pure. Quicksleaf aerosol meets the criteria established by the US FDA for delivery of inhalation aerosols. Well, that's a new one. I didn't even see that one. <laughs> I didn't. Oh my goodness. I did not see that news. I saw this one. My heart's beating fast here. Tetra Biopharma announces positive initial clinical data from both of its ongoing phase two trials of Quicksleaf. Folks, I'm getting dizzy here. I did not see that other news. All right, let's see what we got here. Tetra Biopharma, uh, a leader in cannabinoid derived drug discovery and development, today announced positive initial clinic data from its ongoing phase two clinical trial for reborn one and plentitude uh, for cancer pain. Quicksleaf is a botanical inhaled investigational new drug with a fixed ratio of THC and CBD that meets USA and CGMP regulatory requirements. That means European and the rest of the world. Uh, the Reborn trial is a head-to-head -head open label crossover phase two study against oral opiates in the management of short frequent episodes of incapacitating pain in patients with cancer. The Reborn One study protocol is assessing the safety right now. So this news came out today that they were meeting all the criteria. They haven't finished the trial and we really need it to be finished. Reborn Two was another trial that was launched over in Europe and is already completed and they are awaiting the results for Reborn One. So it has been silent for a long time. It really has. So this is really good news, and I should probably read all of this, but I don't want to bore you. I do want to take a look at this other news. You and I are going to look at this together. I did not know they had an aerosol. One is a vape. It's a little button, a little pill, if you will, that you vape in their device, and it takes away the pain in just a matter of minutes. You know how it feels when you smoke a cigarette, or if you do smoke marijuana, the rush of the nicotine or the THC hits you very quickly. And that's what happens when you inhale into the lungs. You absorb it very fast. So aerosol, let's see what this is for goodness sake. Tetra Biopharma confirms meeting with the FDA to align on the requirements for marketing authorization. Ooh, ooh making money. Uh, let's see. Uh, the company today announced it has received a letter from the United States Food and Drug Administration granting a Type C meeting 
to discuss safety and labeling requirements for obtaining marketing approval regulatory pathway for its quick sleeve. All right, um, right. Seeing if there's anything different here. The delivered dose uniformity of aerosol generated by the Mighty Medic medical device meets the criteria established by the FDA for inhalation aerosols. Now they may be just calling the vape an aerosol. I'm thinking of like hairspray or deodorant, you know, pss, pss, pss. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking when they're saying aerosol. So I think they too are just talking about the vape. Um, what else do they say here? Inhalation powders. The DDU is a measure of drug discharged from the mouthpiece of an inhalation device and compares that measurement to the target delivered dose, meaning the DDU specification is critical for quality inhaled drug products. I see. So they got a device that's pre-measuring. I guess it's not a tablet of some sort. So in either case, both pieces of news are good news. So you have a drug that's going to wipe out me, uh, morphine and, uh, oh, I don't know, folks, all the opiates that, that are out there that are killing people. I just read this month, this year, we have had more deaths by opiates than ever before. It was a record-setting year. That is a sad record to have set. Uh, this company is set to bring this to market as soon as it's produced they have got so many chains and avenues set in place so once the fda does come out with the rebore one thumbs up and this all sounds really good folks i would anticipate this to run how far well there's only one other company that sells a drug approved by the fda made with anything from cannabis it was made with cbd that is epilex epilex is made by ghp i believe it is or is it gph gp pharma gh pharma it's a pharma company and they went from 18 dollars to over 240 dollars in i think like uh, two weeks so you tell me you think this company can go from 30 cents to 30 dollars well there you go that's a thousand percent gains do you think or ten thousand percent do you think it can go to a hundred dollars I think it can go to over 200 bucks. So I've invested heavily. And when it reaches $10, I got about 10,000, 115,000 shares to sell, which will give me 150,000 to live on while it grows and reaches that $200 mark. Then I'll sell the rest. Okay, let's go take a look at that chart and let's see what it's been looking like. So there you go. This is TB PMF six month, four hour. You can see she really hit strong here when she was entering into a reborn trial. Everyone is excited. It was only supposed to take 10 weeks. Doggone the bureaucracy of it all. And then it started to fall, and it has fallen, fallen, fallen for quite a while. And today was its first serious bounce in a long time. So you can see how low we are. Now, just to show you that I am not kidding and I am serious about this, this is a list of my purchases. I have been buying this for quite a while. As I said, it's my retirement stock. And I will sell a small amount at just $10, which is really going to be cheap. But if I can sell 15,000 shares at $10, I'll make $150,000. That should hold me over for a year. And I'll let the other big amount of shares I have left just sit there to grow and grow and grow. And I'll come back when it's big. So. Just so you know, I wasn't BSing you. I really like this company. All right, let's get all that mess off of there so we can see our chart. All right, you can see even the volume has been getting very thin, and just recently here, it started to pick up. So let's come in on that five-day, five-minute. You can see what happened today. Falling, 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 hit a low bubble, and what? What? Do you think it's just coincidental that news came behind it? Or was every single one of these a low bubble? And it just kept getting lower and lower and lower. And finally, something stopped it from falling. Mm, could be. So we had a big jump first thing, and then it fell. And it was very slow here during the middle of the day. And at the end of the day, it started to pick up. And you can see it had a rhythm. You can see it had a rhythm here. Now, I don't know if that was institutional buying coming in at perfect chunks or what, but you can see she was definitely starting to climb up. She took a dip here just at the end of the day. I'm sure there was a lot of people that bought in who were just waiting to get out. 
They felt trapped, and a lot of people will sell at break even and have no patience to wait anymore. So it doesn't surprise me on the first day of a bounce after a long downfall that you start having some selling going on. And you should expect that as it's climbing, unless it climbs so fast, this could burst. And I expect it to burst at some point. I don't know which piece of news is going to be if it isn't the Reborn 1 trial complete. Thumbs up. Uh, it could be the aerosol thing to sell. But when the right piece of news comes out here, any time, I expect this in the next 30 days, 60 days at the most. But then I've been saying that for a while. I'll be honest. But it is that close. This is going to explode because they have got so many drugs that are so safe, cure so many problems, take away pain. And it's, you know, you can buy this, you can buy this quick sleep at a dispensary. Or if your state doesn't sell marijuana, you can buy it at your pharmacy. They will sell it as a drug. They've covered all the bases. So I'm very excited about all the preliminary work and groundwork this company has set up waiting for the FDA to finish. Well, there you go. My number one biotech company. Could be yours too if you get in quick enough. <laughs> well, there you go. Three biotechs. I actually made it through it. I hate talking about biotechs. They're too technical and they're dry and there's normally a lot of news you got to sort through, but I got through it. The other thing is I don't like to invest in them. They normally take a long time before they bring any returns. First, they got all that research, and that costs money. They got to make offerings and sell shares, dilute the shareholders' value just so they can keep looking and looking. Then, once they find a product, they've got to put it into trials. That takes five to seven years to get through, and you're praying that it passes. And of course, the trials cost money, so they're selling more shares, so they're diluting it even further, and then they got to get it on the market. Oh my God. God. So personally, <laughs> I'm not into biotechs and biopharmas, but TBPMF looked like a cheat to me. I seen the finish line. It was 10 feet away, a 10-week trial, so I jumped into the track and I thought if I just ran across that finish line, yeah, I could have all the confetti fall on me and get a prize. Well, it wasn't that easy, <laughs> but I do see is that I am in a a very very close race here i do believe tbpmf is on the edge i don't know when i really don't but you can see we're heading in the right direction all the lights are green i just have to be a little more patient that's what we all need sometimes so do your dd we got three companies here that are all riding up all on different significant reasons and can make you some money and none of them are that expensive we, we go from a penny to eight cents to 18 cents. Remember folks, a penny doubled is a hundred percent gain. And the rest of these have just got catalyst, catalyst. Do your DD. You're gonna find out more just like I do. And you're gonna get excited just like I do. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.